Dependency injection is a first-class citizen in modern ASP applications. But what if you have an application that's running using web forms? Is there a way to hook dependency injection into that? Let's mash on that. Hi, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the ASP Net Monsters. In today's episode, we're going to take a look at dependency injection, but we're going to take a look at it in the context of a web forms application. Uh, so this is an actual another one of those real-world problems that I ran into. I happened to be working on a web forms project, and web forms, for those who missed it, uh, kind of keeps everything in the same file. So if you're familiar with Razor Pages, it's sort of like Razor Pages, pages but Razor Pages done wrong. Uh, so there were a lot of problems kind of back in the day with how this stuff worked. Uh, it was originally built to help people who were coming off of building Windows applications, WinForm applications, and trying to reduce the, the level of impedance getting them started on it. Uh, the trade-off for that was that these didn't really work in the way that the internet worked. So there was a lot of like passing state back and forth and just assuming that servers were instantaneous and that kind of thing. So it, it led to poor performance, but it's a fairly productive way to build applications. Anyway, um, if we open one of these things up, uh, each page is sort of two parts. There's the, the visual part that you see here, which is HTML and JavaScript. Uh, and then behind the scenes is this thing called code behind, which is the code that gets executed uh, during the life cycle of this page. Uh, so the tendency was that you would just jam a whole bunch of stuff in this file, uh, ignore anything to do with good design, and hope that the encapsulation of just having it in that single page would be enough to, to limit the amount of code. In practice, you ended up with like, 2,000 line long files that did everything under the sun and it was really difficult to maintain. Often even 2,000 lines just within that page load method. So. Yes, yeah, sometimes, yeah. I definitely have examples of this up on another monitor right now. <laughs> um, but this was sort of before the days that dependency injection became big and, and useful. So dependency injection allows us to uh, invert controls so that we can break up our pages into smaller parts and put services in there and make them testable and reusable and all those good things that we're striving for as software developers. Uh, but there's no, there, there didn't used to be any way of doing this, like dependency injection in web forms. Um, but then in ASP.NET 4.7.2, or sorry, the .NET 4.7.2, uh, there were some hooks added to the lifecycle for web forms that allows you to inject stuff. Um, and at the time, Microsoft came out with a, a little package that helped you add Unity to your project. Unity is a dependency injection framework from Microsoft. Uh, and they, that kind of got lost in the, the shuffle somewhere along there. So whoever owned that project never bothered updating it. But uh, somebody else did. Uh, so a fellow by the name of House of Cats, which is a great name. Uh, updated this package and we can add that to this project here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add this package here called dependency injection dot webforms dot unity. And this is going to add a couple of things to our project here. Um, so the thing that we're going to do is we're going to drop into our global dot ASAX and in our application start, we are going to run Unity. Get this and in a moment. There we go. Um, so this is enough to wire up Unity in the the pipeline, basically. Uh, and this is going to return a container. Uh, this. Uh, and then we can register things inside of this container. So let's go and create a, a quick service here, and we'll add that to our container. So I'll add a folder. This, this is, and in there we can add a new service. So we'll call that a tiny service. Uh, and here we'll just do public. Uh, let's get time. 
will return time. Uh, and then we'll extract an interface from this. There we go. So we have an iTime service now that has a get time function on it. Uh, and then as a container, we could do a container. Yes, register type. So then we give it an I time service. Time service. Time this. Right. What's this thing's complaint? I probably need to include Unity. Enough. Good. There we go. Okay. So this is going to every time we ask for an I time service, it will give us a time service and a concrete implementation. Uh, and then over here on our page load, um, well, we should have the page load in the, in the constructor for this. So public default, uh, we can ask for an I time service here. Just make that a uh, yeah, uh, and then we can use this within our application or within this here to, to fill out fields and whatever. Uh, so if we let's go over here, I'm gonna try and about use web forms again. Um, I think I might make that a public property on this thing. I think you can protect it. I should have access to it here. That sounds Try. right to me. Uh, <laughs> this is where things start to fall apart quickly. Uh, service. So that's what it's called. Uh, Lowercase time service. Still not helping me order complete. Time service. This stuff time service, I don't know. Maybe this is how Something like that. I don't know if this is gonna work. <laughs> get time. I especially like that your get time method returns the date. Yeah, that's it's no time. That's really a good call. Uh that's not containing. Hmm. Public read only. I don't know. I would have thought this would work. Let's find out. IntelliSense says it's not going to work, but we'll see if IntelliSense is right here. Yeah, you should be able to access a public variable yeah, so, Yeah, I'm not really familiar anymore <laughs> with how my forms works. It has been a while. It has. Right, super slowly loading. It's not at all because I have 600 applications open. Yeah. It is doing stuff. Hey, there we go. So got the date. Got a date, a super small date, but a date nonetheless. Good job. Let's see if I can make three wrap. I like that it does constructor injection. I'd seen a, some other iteration of this in the past and it only did like property injection. Mm. Uh, right. Which was an improvement still, but kind of like the constructor injection just because that's what we're using basically everywhere else. 
Yeah, so this, this is pretty good. This will inject it into a wide variety of things. So it'll inject it into into like pages, it'll inject it into controls, um, and I think it'll inject it into services to like, um, what's things called web methods. Um, but yeah, so I, the application that I'm using this in uh, is kind of a hybrid application. So it has some MVC components into actually, uh, it's old enough that it has uh, web API stuff in it on MVC. Uh, so using that same container that I built there, I can push that into all the more modern stuff that has dependency injection built into it and do all the resolution with that too. So I don't need to have multiple containers or remember to register stuff in multiple containers. But cool. yeah, this, this is great if you're modernizing an old application and you're looking to kind of clean up a, an ASPX page that's gotten out of control which would be pretty much any ASPX page, uh, then being able to do this is very useful. All right, well, thanks everybody for watching. Remember to like, comment, and share, especially if you can share with yourself about 15 years ago when web forms were all the rage. And we'll talk to everybody on the next episode.